Someone asked me a question about how I break down words, so that's a very good question. I would like to start by saying we live in what is called the sight word generation because what happened as a part of the school system and, you know, they're trying to sell books constantly and just make money off of this monstrosity of an organization called school, they started teaching people sight words. So what that means is you just look at the word and read it. So what that has actually done is it's made people to where they no longer understand deep meanings of words. So as was asking this question, they ask about etymologies. So you can go to etym online, and I'll post that in the description. dot com, etym dot com, and that's the etymology dictionary. So if you just Google etymology online dictionary, that should be the first thing that comes up. And then you just type in your word, and it gives you not only a definition of the word, but it gives you where it comes from, its backgrounds and other languages. So like extract might come from the Latin extraxit. Or if you look up like someone who said to have magnanimous character, well, if you look up the background of the word magnum in the Latin, you'll see that it has to do with like having a big character or like a well-rounded character. So there's all kinds of different words. There's, you know, you could say prognosis. Well, that is a Greek word. You, to know the background, it means to know before. Pro means before. Gnosis means to know. So to know before. Or like you might have heard of like, for example, like I said, the magnanimous, you might have heard of the Magna Carta. That's supposed to be like the document of freedom, if, if I remember correctly. So even like there's, we even have English words that are thought to come directly from the Hebrew, like issue or gloss. Those are a couple of examples of words that seem to have Hebrew roots are like, for example, let me, Yom Kippur, it might be one that's known at least amongst people who are believers. It means the Day of Atonement. Or you, you might have heard some of the, there's different words that are common, kind of because people joke about them, maybe like Mazel Tov. At a, I think they say that at like the marriage. I'm not sure. So just what what helps to be able to track words is to define them. Go and get you a 1828 Noah Webster dictionary. One second, I'll grab that. So right here, you have the Noah Webster 1828 dictionary. And this is a really great example here. Let, let me look up issue. This It's a great example because it gives you where the word comes from. So this actually includes the etymology in it. So like I said with that word issue, let me look up I-S-S-U-E. All right. So if you look, if, if you look up issue right here, it, it'll actually give you the etymology in this one. So it says it may coincide in origin with the Hebrew. And then it gives you the Hebrew word right there. So, um, and then, I'll, you know, I'll show you gloss too. And gloss often, if you're reading older books, has the idea of language. So they'll say they spoke in the gloss of English, or they spoke in the gloss of Latin, and that's why in the New Testament, glossa means language. So to speak in tongues, 
tongues is the English way of saying language, like lingua, or that's where we get language, I'm sure. So lingua, language, and then glossa. Glossa is the Greek way in the New Testament to say language. So like an, an example I heard someone say is, um, Varsuth, young knave, what tongue dost thou speak? And it means of a truth, young knave, what tongue dost thou speak? So, young man is what that means. So, to say tongue, you're just simply asking, like if I said, what tongue do you speak? I'm just asking you what language. It's nothing complicated, so gloss. All right, so gloss right here, it'll show you that it says in Hebrew, signifies to shine but from the sense of smoothness so right there there's that hebrew word so just learning about etymologies and the more you do your homework the more you dig the more you study the more you learn uh don't get this strong concordance right here this is the worst strong concordance i've ever seen in my life this is the weakest Strong's, not the strongest Strong's. Get this one right here. Get this book right here. The strong, the new Strong's Expanded Exhaustive Concordance. You see the little pillar on it? So the Expanded Exhaustive Concordance. This is a really great one right here. This one really breaks down the words to their simplest parts. Rather than like this one. Whoever did this was just like some kind of new age um, lazy scholar or something. I don't know, but this is a horrible Strong's. Don't get that one. And um, another great book to have is the this Keyword Study Bible from AMG. It actually has done a great job in its concordance in the back too. So this one actually comes with the Strong's concordance built in it. So one of the one of the ways you can also learn is to understand the words that we already have in our language that goes back. Like I was showing you the gloss and issue goes back to Hebrew. Understand, like for example, I opened this up and immediately I saw you logeo right there. And I thought to myself, hey, that looks like eulogy. So I'm positive that's where we get our word eulogy from just from seeing it so you'll start to get like that you'll start to get to where you can see like idolo la truo which means idolatry well you can see idolatry in that word idolo idolatry <laughs> you know it's like you can see the connection there so you and I know this because I've studied. I, I don't even have to really see that. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm just saying it because you'll pick up on it. That's what you want to do. You want to unpack the meanings of words so you can begin to pick up on what they mean. So you means well and logeo means to speak. So that means a well speak. So if I read it now, it says from a compound of 2095, and 3056. So if you don't know what those mean, you look up 2095 and 3056 in this concordance. They're all numbered, so it makes it makes them easy to find. And you means well, so to speak well of eulogy. <laughs> Religiously to bless, thank, or invoke a benediction upon prosper. So if I were to actually do that, so this one this this one's number is 2127, but it says it comes from 2095 and 3056. So if I look up 2095, oh, it's right here. It says you. And then it says good or well. And then it says 3056. And I know that the second part of this word is logeo, so 3056 is going to be logeo or logos. So I look up 3056. 3056. Logos. It says something said, including the thought, by implication, a topic, subject, or discourse, also reasoning, the mental faculty or motive by extension, a computation, especially with the art article in John, the divine expression, that is Christ. Okay. 
So what you do is you read. <laughs> There's a um, comedian. His name's Brian Regan. And he says some funny stuff. He has this show called the the epitome of hyperbole, and he kind of jokes about that, right? It's like that's the way you learn, man. You read, right? He's like, I'm I'm trying to learn how to I'm trying to learn how to learn. It's like, how do you get it done? You read, man. That's what you do. <laughs> so, but you know, even though he's he's being comedic about it, it's true. You read. Look, you b get you an AMG study Bible. And the reason this is good is it underlines some of the words. It doesn't underline all the words. So honestly, knowing what I know now, I would skip this one and I would get the interlinear bible by jp green coded to strong's because in that one it gives you every single word with the strong's number and then you get a strong concordance so you know um here i'm gonna take y'all over here so you know this is my little this is this is my bookshelves right here so i have quite a bit of reading, like the Theological Word Book of the Dictionary down there, the purple ones. I have the Kill and Delish right there. I have some stuff on the Blood Covenant and ancient understandings of Blood Covenants. And then like Bullfinch's Mythology. I got the, the Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics by James Hastings. And I got some stuff by Philip Schaeff up here. I got some of the complete biblical library, um, the Brown Driver Briggs, Unholy Hands on the Bible by John Dean Burgeon, so the theological workbook of the the Old Testament. But see, the thing is, is you see the tabs, tab it out. You know, learn how to use an index in a table of contents. So you know the table and the contents in the front, and then the index is in the back. So you don't have to read the whole book all the time. Just find the information that you need. And then up here, you have the commentary of the New Testament from the Talmud and Hebraica by John Lightfoot, the Golden Bow. This teaches a lot about like some of the understanding what people are doing with the pagan practices. This is a really good little book I found right here. A Theological Word Book of the, the Bible by Richardson, Alan Richardson. And some Gleason Archer, um, Spurgeon, Trench's synonyms. You know, but like I said, you got to read them. And I've read a lot more than those tabs right there. But sometimes I, I, I haven't always tabbed things out. So I'll read them. But, you know, if you grab my books, you'll see that I've been reading them. Because I have all kinds of stuff tabbed out. So that's just one encyclopedia though, right? I mean, like, you pick them up and you see I have a whole bunch of tabs in them. Because it, it doesn't do anything. If you're a Biblia, if you have bibliomania, or you're a bibliophile, or you're a bibliomancer, you're just, all you do is you collect books. But if you don't read them, the books don't do you any good. Like, see, bookmarks and tabs, you got to read. If you're going to buy the books, you got to read them, right? Or like, like look, look at these books here. Like, I don't know if y'all could see that when I held them up the first time. But see, you, that's the Strong's Concordance I showed you. That's the AMG Study Bible. All those tabs. You have to you have to read it, man. Like the dictionary. Get into a dictionary and learn what some words mean, you know? So, okay. So the reason I'm showing you that is to explain, like, how you learn meanings of words. Like, you don't just... You don't have to just define. You don't have to just learn synonyms. You don't have to just learn antonyms. You don't have to just learn like homonyms or metonyms and just learning what those words mean, right? So nim means name. So you know homonym means the same name, right? Or um, metonym. Well, metanoia means to repent. It means to be changed and think differently. So metonym. You know, it's connected. I don't know exactly what it means right offhand, but you just learn the meanings of words. Like, sin means together, nim. So, to, named together, they have the same meanings. Sin, nim. 
like syncretism means that you're combining your um judgment perhaps syncret crite maybe criticism criti syncretism judge together so they're using the same judgment so i don't judge like a roman catholic does i don't judge like a uh, messianic jew does i don't judge like a baptist church does we judge together with christ our syncretism is with christ and i just put that together interesting i'm guessing that's crite which means judgment so to judge together so because sin means together right like a um synchromess transmission or a a um like you have syncretisms they call it well where things come together right the same um a symposium so you, you know so i'm just talking about different word meanings you just have to learn what the actual parts of the words mean oh you know what one second y'all i have an excellent book for learning word meanings so let me let me go in here one of the best books that I have for word meanings is this one. So look, that's what I'm saying. You got to read. You know, you have your little books scattered everywhere, all over the house. Your wife gripes because you got books everywhere. Got my little, this is my, my Bibles, and they have some commentaries as well, like with them. So right here, this book is awesome. Do me a favor, anybody who watches this, get you a copy of this book, Dictionary of Latin and Greek Origins. And I mean, this book has done a ton of work for you. If you can get your hands on this book right here. Here, one second. I'll show you what it does. So this one right here. Um, let me, like, okay, so I was talking about metonymy just a minute ago and homonyms and things like that well this has already set everything out for you this is a phenomenal work I don't know who thought of doing this but this is just this is a real treasure let me see if I can find the, what I was looking for hmm Uh, one second, guys. I thought it was in here. Okay, well, I know it. I know it's in here. I just can't find it right now. But for example, n nomen right here. So it says nom, and it says that it means to name. So that you look up and it will say right here, like it'll actually capitalize the parts of the word that come from known. But so it'll say like pranomen, a male citizen. In ancient Rome, the first name of a male citizen was called his pranomen, also prenomen, as Gaius and Gaius Julius Caesar. Julius, the second name, was called the agnomen. It reflected the ancestral line to which you belong. Today, an agnomen is another word for a nickname, sobriquent, moniker, or diminutive. Caesar was his cognomen. We call it a sure name or family name. A misnomer is an error, slip, malapropism, or mistake, especially in calling out someone's name. A nom de guerre is an assumed name. So... It goes, it goes on and on, but like I'm telling you, it actually gives you the etymology, and then it shows you how it still exists in the English language, which is really, really awesome. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope this helps, and I hope that you know a little bit more about how to find some information and how to put unpack word meanings through synonyms and um antonyms and to use a dictionary or to use a strong concordance or and to get in there and dig and just look up and interact with information read and study and write oh yeah the big one write 
underline things. Like another thing you look, if you look through all here, yeah, I have a lot of tabs and stuff. But you also get in here, you underline, you circle, you look up different things, take some notes in the front of your book. So, all right. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.